Welcome back to the second segment of this episode with uh, Sister Anar Alidina. Well, now we're going to talk about our diet. And I'm, uh, I would think that diet plays a huge role um, in, if not taken care of properly, in developing diabetes. Um, what's your take on, on the diet and, and what we eat and how it impacts eventually getting diabetes? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So yes, so diet is very important when it comes to type 2 diabetes, mainly because one of the main macronutrients is carbohydrates, right? And carbohydrates, when it breaks down into our body, it breaks down into glucose, which is a, its simplest form, which is a sugar. So anything that's a carbohydrate is eventually going into sugar in our body. And once we have sugar, our body has to kind of process that. And if we don't have enough insulin, then we just end up with high blood sugars. So what does this mean? So carbohydrates, we just need to be careful of how many carbs we're getting in. So there are several foods that have carbohydrates in them, so I'm just going to explain to you some of the major food groups. Okay, so the first food group are your grains and starches. So in this food groups, you're going to have your rice, you're going to have your pasta, you're going to have your pizza, bread, sandwiches, anything that's a carb or a starch, sorry. Um, there's two vegetables that actually fall in this category, and they are corn and potatoes. Mm. So these are not really a vegetable, they're a starchy yeah. carbohydrate. So they break down into simple sugars. Okay, so that's one group. The second group are fruits. So fruit, uh, fruit juices, even dried fruit. So fruit, you know, yes, it is natural, but it does have sugar in it and our body breaks it down. Um, so we need to be careful with how much fruit we're having. So having, you know, five servings of fruit a day is going to be too much. Oh. So you want to scale it back and you don't want to have more than two servings of fruit a day. Um, secondly, the, or sorry, the third group are our um, dairy. So milk and yogurt. So there's natural sugars in, in dairy, it's called lactose, and that breaks down into sugar in our bodies. So we need to be careful with how much dairy we're getting in. Okay, and then lastly, we have our snack foods. So this is like pretty much anything that's in a wrapper or in a box, like our snack foods, like mm -hmm. cookies, chips, and so forth. Um, and then, you know, our fruit juices, our sodas. So those are where we're getting majority of our carbohydrates. So all those foods. So that's what breaks down to simple sugars. So when we are planning out what we're eating or deciding on what to eat, it's not that you want to stay away from carbohydrates because our body needs it for energy. You know, I think the brain needs about 130 grams of carbohydrates just to function. So we definitely need carbohydrates in our diet, but you want to be careful and choose the right types of carbohydrates, right. okay? So I'm just going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, carbs that you should be getting more of. So we all often hear it to have more whole grains in our diet, right? And the reason is because the whole grain has fiber in it. And so fiber, when we digest it, it takes a lot longer to digest. So our, it doesn't turn into sugar right away. So this is really beneficial for someone who's watching their blood sugars. So it kind of slows the digestion process. So that's why it's, it's good to have whole grain breads, it's good to have whole grain pasta, brown rice, and so forth because of the fiber components, okay? So the way um, carbohydrates affect our body, it's different. Like not all carbohydrates are created equally. So we just have to be careful on how we space out how we eat. So I just want to talk a little bit about South Asians and why they're at such a high risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Now a lot of people think it's because of their diet, because it's a very high carbohydrate diet, but really it's a mix of genetic and environmental environmental. So with the genetic component, um, there's been a lot of studies actually that show that um, they actually did studies on babies. So infants of South, South Asian infants compared to Caucasian infants, they found even though their birth weight was like lighter, they actually had a higher waist circumference and more fat. So, um, so that's something interesting to note because South Asians typically have a smaller frame and they are small, but um, you know, their BMI by, might be in a good range, but their waist circumference and where they carry their body fat, that plays a huge role um, in terms of developing type 2 diabetes. And that's why this, I guess, this ethnic group is at such a high rate of developing type 2. I think it's, uh, I think they're two, no, three to four times more likely to develop type 2 than Caucasians. Koja is included. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Right. So, you know, I just wanted to highlight absolutely. that. Excellent. And just, just a small point here. Um, I, I know we always refer to rice 
Uh, I mean, we all love our rice, obviously. Uh, we always refer to it as a carb. But I recently found out, and I'm, I'm a little surprised why it took me so long to find out, but uh, that it's actually a sugar. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell me how that works? Um, how, how, how does the sugar component come into it? Right. So because it's the carbohydrate, right, the way it breaks down in our body, it just turns into, sh into glucose. Oh, so okay. all carbohydrates, that's what it will do eventually in our body. It just breaks down to its simplest form, which is glucose. And that's what makes, you know, turns into sugar in our, in our, in our blood. Right. So that's, that's just what it is. Okay, so I guess in, um, to, to, to summarize it, it's we, the more carbs, we may link them to being energy sources, but right. if, we overdo, if we overdo it, it would convert into sugar yes. in, in, in the body. Yes. And then takes us to a kind of a dangerous path, I'm guessing. Yeah, so when, okay, so that's a really good question because when you have too much sugar and your body can't process it and it uses it for energy, right. the extra sugar is going to be stored as fat. Okay, so this could lead to weight gain, mm. and I touched on earlier that if you have a higher body weight, that puts you at a higher risk for developing type 2 diabetes, right? So, yeah, so having high blood sugars for long periods of time, you know, can eventually just lead to more fat. Understood. Wow. Um, anything to absolutely stay away from if you're a diabetic? Um, is there anything like that, that you should absolutely not have this or... Anything along those lines? Yeah, so there's really not anything that you, you can't have. And that's what, okay. you know, with people who have diabetes, they often, you know, are worried. They're like, oh, I can never have, you know, cake again, or I can't have my sweets. Mm -hmm. But you can. It's just spacing it out and not having it all the time. You know, it's just being really careful. And if you're someone who has diabetes, the best way to manage your blood sugar is to check, you know, to do glucose monitoring. So, you know, if, you're, if you want to know how your meal is impacting your blood sugar, it's just test your, um, your fingers, right? You do yeah. this strip, uh, you know, two hours after eating your meal to see how that impacts your, your, um, your blood okay. sugars. And I'm sure those results are pretty accurate. Obviously. Yeah, they, they, they are. They've come a long Excellent. way. Good. Um, as uh, you know, I hope you've been enjoying this, uh, this episode so far. Uh, we're now going to move on to the third segment of uh, this episode. And as the new year is approaching, we're all going to be making our new year resolutions. So we're going to be back uh, discussing how to prepare our meals or our diets as we go into the new year towards a more healthier version of ourselves. So please uh, click on and we'll see you in the next episode.